Hello, this is Rebecca McDowell, and here again with the uh, demonstration of basic scanning using Photoshop and um, Epson Twain. So I'm going to be scanning this illustration in black and white uh, in preparation for coloring it uh, digitally. So the first thing that you need to do in order to scan is to place the image onto the scan bed. And the scan bed has little markings on the sides. So the side that has the markings on it, here and here, that corner is where you're gonna wanna put your art. So if you have an eight and a half by 11 sheet, which actually this is bigger than that, then you would put that right up in the corner there, just right up against the corner. And then uh, it would fit perfectly into the scanning area of this machine. And many scanners have the same um, set up. So uh, in this case, however, my illustration is on a much larger piece of paper and it's a little bit too big to fit onto the scan bed. So I'm going to position it as best I can so that I can fit most of it onto the scan bed and then open up uh, Photoshop and start to scan. <clears throat> so I'm lining up the top of the paper with the scan and I can see because it's lit behind I can see a little bit of where my artwork is so I'm hoping that this will work out well. <clears throat> so now that I've positioned this I'm going to open up Photoshop so I'm going to share the screen and open up my desktop. This is where I went wrong before. I shared Photoshop and the twin didn't get picked up by Zoom, so everything was invisible. <laughs> but this time, hopefully, that will work. Now, when you're scanning from Photoshop, what you want to do is you want to go to the File menu and choose Import and then choose Images from Device. And when you do that, it will locate any devices connected to your computer that are capable of scanning or importing images. So I'm selecting the Epson Perfection and I'm going to hit Overview, which is going to give me a preview scan of what's on my scan bed and how it's positioned. Hmm. It's not showing the whole thing. It's feeling a little weird today. Let's try again. There we go, that's a bit better. So you can see that my image fits um, from side to side pretty well, but the bottom's cut off. So I'm going to have to scan it twice. Now I'm scanning this in black and white, and there's three settings here, color, black and white, and text. Black and white really means grayscale, and text really means black and white, like just black and just white. So it will turn it into a graphic with only two colors, an indexed graphic. Whereas the black and white setting will, will have infinite or nearly infinite shades of gray. And of course, color will scan in color. Since my artwork is black and white, I'm going to use the black and white setting, but I'm not going to use the text setting because I want there to be the gradations of grays. This is a hand inked piece. And so there's, there's some gradations that I might want to exploit when I'm cleaning up the artwork. And I have chosen 400 DPI just based on the size of the picture and thinking that I might want to make it a little bit bigger to poster size. I've chosen 400 DPI as my size. Um, auto selection means that it will automatically pick something on your picture and select it as what you probably want to scan. Usually that doesn't work out so well unless you've planned ahead for it. So uh, I tend to ignore that. And then there's a destination for the scan, which you can choose ahead of time. You can put in a name here and you can see I've recently scanned this. This is why all the settings are already set up. The format I choose is TIFF and the reason is because TIFF files um, have, um, you can set them to have no um, compression. So there's no loss of data when you, uh, when you scan to TIFF. And also TIFF files allow you to work with multiple layers, which means you can manipulate the scan um, and 
uh, save it without having to save it into a new format. They're also compatible with every, um, every uh, application uh, that is uh, used for printing. So you wouldn't be able to upload a TIFF to the web. It tends to be a very large file, but it contains all the information necessary for print programs. And if you want to export an image for the web, you're probably going to reduce it to a, a smaller size anyways. So you would make that into a JPEG or a ping uh, file that was uh, optimized for your web application. But for a master file, TIFF is perfect. PSD is also fine. You can choose uh, a PSD file, but it doesn't give you that option here in the scan window. So TIFF is the next best thing. Um, I'm not going to choose any Im image correction here. If I wanted to choose manual, then it would allow me to alter the brightness and contrast. But I'm not going to do that because I'm going to do that in Photoshop after I scan it. Unsharp mask is set to high. Now, unsharp mask is a setting that allows the scanner to interpolate um, any um, changes in uh, distance from the scan bed. So in my case, because the picture has um, is, is, is going off of the edges of the scan bed, um, at the sides and the bottom, not all of it is actually touching the scan bed. And uh, you may have a picture also that's wavy. And when that happens, then that part of the picture that's not touching the scan bed uh, might actually be blurry or out of focus. So unsharp mask allows the scanner to correct for that. Descreening is very important if you are scanning something that's been previously printed, say an image from a magazine or a poster or something that you want to use in a collage. Um, so there's various settings here that you can choose depending on the uh, lines per inch of the print. Uh, and it, it tells you which ones to use in which situations, um, or you can just choose general. But I don't use de-screening when I'm scanning my own art because my own art has never been printed. It's very important though, when you are scanning uh, pre-printed art, because if you don't use the, the, the screening filter, then what you end up with is a moiré pattern. And you may have seen that on scans on the internet. Because uh, the scanner uh, scans uh, dots in a grid, it interfaces with the existing grid that was used to print the artwork. And that causes uh, a kind of a star pattern to form or a squares or something like that, depending on the angles. Um, and it looks really weird. So if you've ever seen that, that's because the person didn't know to use a de-screening filter when they were scanning the art. Um, backlight correction is used if you're scanning a transparency. This is a pretty fancy machine. It even has an attachment that allows you to scan transparencies and slides. Uh, but in this case, I don't need that. Um, and dust removal, again, if you're scanning a, um, a transparency or um, a, a negative, uh, you might want to use that. Or, you know, in some situation where there's a lot of little dots you want it to get rid of, it doesn't really work that great because it, it only picks out things of specific size. Um, so I tend to not use it, but um, it can be useful in certain situations. And color restoration uh, just allows the scanner to decide what color it's supposed to be as opposed to what color it thinks it is. I don't know. It, I've never used it. Anyway, so now we're going to go ahead and scan, and it's going to create a new Photoshop document. Now, I had clicked before combine into a single document, and I found out that that doesn't work, so don't use that. <laughs> All it did was keep scanning the same thing over and over again, even though I had changed the position of the picture. So I was like, what, what's going on here? And I didn't do it. So anyway, uh, it looks like we're ready to go, um, except that it doesn't say scan. Why doesn't it say scan? You won't let me scan? Huh. What is it that I have failed to do here? Oh, I haven't selected anything. It wants me to make a selection. Uh, in, in, in the Epson scan utility, you don't actually have to select it. If you have no selection made, it just scans the entire uh, area. But I was forgetting that in the Photoshop version of the Twain, you do have to select something. And now it's going to let me scan. Okay, so here we go.
Now you can see here that it says frog prints too, and that's because I scanned this before with the same name. So it assumes that I want it to give a number rather than overwriting the original document. So it's adding a number to it for me. And there is my document. Now I'm going to go back over and import again uh, images from device. And then I'm going to just move my picture so that I get the bottom part. That means I'm just going to line up the bottom of the paper here and try and get everything in. <clears throat> now it gives me the option of creating a new layer in the frontmost document, and I'm going to give it a chance to do that and see what happens. Uh, wish me luck. Here we go. Uh, oh, wait, let me click overview again and see what it looks like. Okay, looks like everything is there. So I'm going to Click scan and see what happens. Takes a while because it's high resolution. Okay, it has created it as another layer in this document, which means that it will make it a little bit easier for me to piece this together. However, I have actually been piece uh, uh, doing this previously. And the part that I did in Photoshop where I was piecing it together actually already exists. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the share. And that is the entire process of scanning a document. Easy. Thank you.